I'm pretty passionate about um, the environment and about the environment that I'm responsible for here on our farm, but I'm also very passionate about the environment right across the world. And I think the beef industry um, is starting to take, you know, responsibility for the, the, the emissions that we're making. And I think that's really important. We have to be brave in that space and the beef industry is being really brave in that space. Hi, my name's John Wright. I'm a beef producer from Central West New South Wales. We're in a little town called Woodstock. We've got about three and a half thousand acres, 500 breeding cows. We're a seed stock operation as well as a commercial producer. I think there's about you know four major areas as a beef producer that I can contribute to reducing our emissions to help fix the problem of climate change. They're pretty simple. It's in the genetics of our animals. It's how we manage our properties day to day. It's all about how we can sequest carbon. We can take carbon out of the atmosphere and, and hold it in our soil for a long period of time. And then there's, there's different things as far as feed additives that we might be able to give to our animals to reduce their emissions. The best way to describe feed efficiency, I think, is, you know, we're trying to breed animals that um, produce as much beef as possible for as little feed as possible. One thing we do know is the amount of methane an animal produces or a cow produces is directly related to how much they eat. So if we can reduce the amount they're eating for this, to produce the same product, we're going to have a, a, a more sustainable product and a, a, a product that we can be proud of. We didn't just choose the most efficient animals. They had to be the most efficient animals that also grew and also marbled and also showed all the fertility factors that, that we needed and muscularity traits that we know are the ones that make commercial producers more profitable. And that was always our core principle of using those traits in our selection index that make commercial producers more profitable because that's our job. We've been doing this feed conversion testing for 23 years on this line of cattle now. Most of the um, trial work that we've done is showing us, I think we've shifted feed efficiency in that area about 15 to 20%. So our herd is now eating 15 to 20% less than the average herd around. We've got so much evidence backing up what we've done now, which is really exciting and, and it was logical. That's what that's what the original research said, that if you identify those animals that are good converters and breed from them, you'll improve efficiency over time. From the beginning, we started on just a commercial trait that was about making more money for commercial producers, and it still does. Nothing's changed over the last 25 years. What's evolved is the relationship between feed intake and methane production, and that's a, a really interesting part. One thing that, that we have shown after the, over the last sort of 24 or 25 years, we've been a bit of an experiment in ourselves. And after 25 years, I think we'd see the problems that could come from selecting for feed efficiency in our herd. So if there was implications, which many people have been concerned about in the industry in relation to feed efficiency, we're not seeing any of them. We're maintaining industry standards for fertility and growth and all those important traits. So, you know, one of the most exciting things is we have an example of, you know, what can, you can do if selecting for feed efficiency. Our job was to create animals that were more efficient. The, the part that those animals that are requiring less feed to do the same job, they hit the wall at a later stage. So when challenged, whether it be in drought or in just in a bit drier seasons, the animals that require less feed will hit the wall as far as fertility or their ability to fatten or their ability to yield. They will hit that wall later than other animals and that's got to be of a real benefit. The other part is in the management of our cattle on the place. Having done the work in the area of feed efficiency, I respect the input, the feed. So I've learnt to manage my cattle in a way of not letting them get too fat utilize management strategies that reduce the intakes of my cattle because the amount of methane a cow produces is directly related to how much she eats. The tools that we're using in our program basically start at birth. We're weighing every calf. There's 500 calves being born a year. Every single one of those is, is weighed. They're weighed at weaning time, yearling age. Um, all our bulls, we're doing the efficiency testing on. At the end of the efficiency test, we're doing the eye muscle area fat and marbling um, scans, weighing every cow as she weans a calf, 
We've taken DNA samples on every single bull that we've tested over the last 23 years. We're now starting to get a lot of that um, DNA processed to get a better indication of the genetic ability of our bulls for our consumers. As far as our business is concerned and the part that we pay in looking after the piece of land and the environment that we operate in, genetics is a small part of it. We've got you know, three or four, three and a half thousand acres here and we look at that land as we don't own it, we've just paid that money to, to care for it for a period of time, and that brings responsibility. So in that space we've tried to do that in the most ecologically sound way. So we respect nature and respect what nature can do over time. So that's where we jumped off the high input type production system and reduced input costs. We're encouraging diversity um, in our, our pastures. We're capturing carbon in our soil because the value of that is an enormous part. Respecting ground cover and, and keeping ground cover um, on our property and then using rotational grazing to stimulate the system and really build that system to become more profitable, to utilize more of our rainfall and have a more sustainable system, which makes me happier and more proud of, of the business that I run. After 23 years of breeding this line of cattle, some of the greatest learnings I've had is the, the ability to persist and keep going uh, will be rewarded in time. Remember how passionate you are, hold on to that passion and the reasons that you started. Things won't always go the way that you think they're going to go and the world and the industry changes and you have to be able to either stick with what you're doing or be brave enough to change um, with those things. So wisely or unwisely we've stuck with what we're doing but we're now in a position where you know we're really excited about the type of cattle that we're breeding that you know we can offer to the industry to help tell a story that's positive for our industry. Breeding cattle and genetics is not the solution it's just one of um, the many parts to it and we've got a lot of exciting things in our industry that we can talk about and measure and extend to consumers to show them we're making a difference. <music>